This is your key summary on evidence-based teaching. Some of you may know what it is already. I know that. Um, look at the term evidence-based teaching. Uh, it's essentially about what evidence we have about the learning process, what methods work best, um, and using that knowledge to design um, and facilitate student learning experiences. And there's two main strands that have come together very powerfully that Jeff Petty now talks about a revolution in teaching and that now we can approach our teaching from a more scientific um, and validated standpoint, a bit like engineering and medicine. So let's plow on and look at these two um, strands. And the first strand owes a lot to the work of John Atty. 15 years meta-analysis of methods that work best and Essentially, he was able to identify how impactful in terms of student learning, which he referred to as effect size of different teaching methods. So when we design our teaching, we can look at these different methods, look at their effect size, apply them to our own teaching context and say, are these the methods that are likely to teach our learning objectives and relate to our students? And we can pick those that are likely to be more impactful. The second big strand is we now know much more about human learning and how the brain works. And what we've been able to derive is what Willingham calls cognitive scientific principles. I call um, core principles of learning. And essentially, these are universal aspects of the learning process that if we apply them thoughtfully, can significantly enhance student learning. And these will be developed in further small um, video lecturettes. Let's go on. Okay, effect size. Well, there is a statistical definition. You can look at that, and you can even go to Visible Learning, um, John's big book on this, and uh, look at all the technicalities of the methodology. But the bottom line is this, that an effect size of 1.0 standard deviation is massive. Look at the um, indicators there, advancing the learner's achievement by one year, proving the rate of learning by 50% to grade elite in DCSE grades. But what's really interesting is that students will typically, um, from one year to the next, um, average effect size is 0 0.40. So any effect size above that uh, is of real interest because it's going to have a significant impact. Some examples of eye effect size methods. Now, John Atty's got lots of these. I've picked those that are probably most relevant to what we're doing with our students. So look at some of those there, particularly feedback. We know that formative assessment is important. We talk about assessment for learning. Yes, it's got a big effect size. So this is something we should systematically plan into our instruction. Teacher student relationships, well. Again, massive effect size, the way we talk to students, our body language, can we use some humor? Can, do, do we actually smile at them occasionally? Um, how do we build that rapport? Again, big. Metacognitive strategies, we'll look at this as a separate entity, but very, very important. Here's some more here. And again, a lot of these you're going to be familiar with. We know if you give students challenging but achievable goals, it's positive that if you give them good deliberate practice it's positive advanced organizers some reason advance i'm doing that here. it's positive now look at that interactive video uh, methods again if designed well big effect size now this is the big point this is a cracker um, both John Atty and Jeff Petty have used the Russian doll analogy it's nothing to do with Maria Sharapova but the basic idea is this that with with some strategies that we use, we can actually combine different eye effect methods. For example, that feedback um, will typically involve some kind of goal. It will typically involve students doing some meaningful activity. Similar with old class interactive teaching, it will involve advanced or if done properly feedback and reviews. But the fact that we can combine these IF methods into a powerful inst overall instructional strategy, and particularly now as we can bring technology tools in, can enhance aspects of the learning process, we can create Russian nulls, or even now, a term that I've kind of chucked into the literature, ICT-enabled Russian nulls. And not just the Russian nulls, but also that it's not just the um, effect size, but the efficiency aspect. For example, advanced organisers only take a few minutes at the beginning of a session, have an effect size of up to 0.41. Okay, 
way. Now, let's have a look at the science of learning. We know that uh, over the last 20 years, we've learned more about the brain than in the rest of uh, human history. And cognitive scientific principles have emerged. And essentially, the universal ways in which the brain takes in processes and uses information to learn effectively. And we're going to look at 10 of these a little bit later. And that you'll become very familiar with them, and you're probably practicing most of them. That's why you're doing this research. But there's a great quote there from Willingham about these cognitive scientific principles. And a lot of you are engineers, so that should make perfect sense. So read that quote carefully and see that it makes perfect sense. And is an advanced organiser for what will come. These are 10 big validated cognitive scientific principles that I refer to as the core principles of learning. You don't need to memorise these now. It's just an advanced organiser because we're going to look at what these means. We'll look at each of them individually. We'll look at how they translate into strategies. You can look at those strategies and you then contextualise them to your teaching. And the job's pretty much done. Doesn't even make it sound awesomely simple. 